today we're going to be practicing negative painting and this is taken from a photograph that I took this year in Hema Park on Vancouver Island and I really liked the tangle of roots coming from these cedar trees so I am putting on a very base wash of raw sienna watered down and I'm using water to spread that wash onto the roots of the tree and the tree trunk and it will dry much much lighter than this it will look almost when I get the darks in it will look almost white so I turn my board so that I don't smush my wrist into the paint as I quite often do making a mess and now I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue to cool the shadows down on the roots and then some burnt sienna mixed in with that raw sienna wash just in the right hand corner. Now I'm going into the cerulean blue, very diluted, and I'm going to do the sky up in the top left corner. This was the second photograph I took mixed with the first photograph. So the second photograph showed a little bit of the river and the background through the trees and the first photograph I focused mainly on the tree roots but I liked the opening sort of peeping through the trees looking at the river bend and the mountain and trees in the background so I, I made a composition of both photographs and I wet the river with clear water and I'm using some very diluted cerulean blue to put some shadow on the river and again when this dries it will look almost white a little bit on the right hand side and I'm going to spread that out with some water dilute it a little bit more and there is one more tree there on the right that I haven't done a base coat for yet which I will do I think I missed it out on the first first run over that's the only thing, when I'm filming, I don't pay attention as well to what I'm doing. I can't get very close to my piece of paper, so I'm not really paying attention. So skip forward to when I've put some burnt sienna and some raw sienna on that third tree. And now I'm mixing up uh, the cobalt blue with a little touch of raw sienna to just grey it down a bit to put the mountain in the background and I'm washing that down with some water. Be careful not to make this too dark. It's and I'm dabbing it a little bit to lighten it. It's really off in the distance. I've got burnt sienna and some cobalt blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson and I'm doing the river bank. There was sort of um brush brush and sand and and stuff on the riverbank. I think I took this in February, February, March. So there wasn't a lot of um, green, new growth greenery, just old, old dry stuff around the riverbank. Some places had some greenery. Now I'm going to mix ultramarine blue with some Windsor yellow. And you can use cadmium yellow, you can use azo or aeolian yellow. It's a nice bright yellow to mix yourself a green and this part of the bank did have quite a lot of greenery on it and the left bank there and I will be putting in the trees toe to that green I'm adding a little bit more of that Windsor yellow a little bit more ultramarine blue and I'm darkening it up with burnt sienna I want that evergreen color for the background trees I have a I believe I'm using a number four could be a number two brush, a four, something small, and I'm using the point of the brush to poke those fir tree tops up. And there's some background mountain, which I'm really watering down, some trees in the distance. And a little bit more yellow to the mix, and I'm going to put the trees on the right hand river bank and they're a little bit darker they're a bit closer to where we were 
And I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna and yellow and put in the, the winter trees and brush that was there. So you have a bit more texture and colour to what's going on on that riverbank. I'm keeping it just pretty simple. It's in the background, but it really opens up that side of the painting showing the distant background, another taller tree there. So I'm adding a little bit more burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to that mix that I had for the trees and I put some hooker's green in there. Getting quite dark. And I'm going to use that mix to shadow the trees and start the bark texture. And I'm using vertical strokes because these cedar trees have quite a lot of texture in the bark, vertical texture. And I will be building that up in layers. This first layer, as always, when it goes on wet, looks quite dark, but it will lighten up. And also on the trees was some light areas where the sun was shining on it. So don't forget to leave your light areas too, so you have a lovely contrast between the shadow and the light. And I was, I'm putting a little bit of green in there. I've gone back into my green mix and I'm putting that on the tree trunk in between the other two. And that did show quite, quite greenish. There was a lot of moss there in the shade a lot of the year and quite damp by the river. So there's a lot of moss on these trees and roots as well. And a little bit more ultramarine blue into my mix. And I'm going into some azo yellow there, making a nice strong color for the greenery. And that's going to be the tree that was coming down to the right hand side of the trees there. And I did go a little bit dark. Before I was working from a picture on my laptop, and I wasn't quite aware that these trees were a little lighter than I made them. I shouldn't have put the burnt sienna in there. I should have put a lighter green. I had to go and print out a photograph because I wanted to look more closely at my reference photograph. I couldn't look on my iPad because I was using my iPad to film this. So that didn't work. It is really good to have your reference material or your reference photograph really close by so you can observe carefully your values and your hues and and the details. Now I have mixed up some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to make a, a dark brown grey and a little bit of raw sienna in there. And I've left the green mix and I'm working now in my negative painting between the light tree roots. I'll be going from one colour to the other from the dark brown, adding sometimes a little blue, sometimes some green, making those shadows interesting and different. There was a lot of moss in this area of the tree root, so I added the green that will later, when I finish this, become moss. And these negative shadows I'm putting in are not the final layer, they're the first layer. I can go in and put more shadow, find more roots, do two or three layers in these little shadow areas. I'm working on very dry paper. This is not a time to be working on wet paper because you won't get any definition of where the roots are. And I'm using a small brush, a little number two brush, and going in and out of the areas where I have drawn quite carefully with pencil the roots. And at some point when I'm doing this, I'm going to have to turn off the camera, bring the painting much closer to me and do it off camera because I cannot get close enough to the painting to get the detail accurate. So this part is sort of showing you what the method is and watch me go back and forth from the green to the brown and adding some raw sienna sometimes. If you add some cobalt blue, it will make it more gray. And I've let it dry, skipped forward a little bit in the process. 
and I'm painting some shadows in the river. I painted some shadow on the rocks using ultramarine and burnt sienna again for a grey and a little bit of raw sienna for some light shading and I'm using a dry brush which means I've put some cobalt blue on my brush dried it off on the paper towel and I'm dragging it across the paper just letting it skip and putting a bit of shadow on the water and I've also around the rocks put shadows in brown colors in the raw sienna the burnt sienna and I've got to fill in these trees too on the right hand side same sort of green mix as I use for the other trees moving down to a much more yellow green mix and adding a little bit of grey just to, to give a little bit of three-dimensional sort of look to the trees not too much fuss there and a little bit of shadow on the bank river bank there I still have quite a lot of work to do but you'll notice on the tree trunk that I've put two or three more layers of vertical bark texture with different browns and greys almost all of them just mixed with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue maybe adding a little bit of cobalt blue sometimes a little bit of raw sienna but those two colors can mix a huge variety of greys and browns depending on how much water you use how much blue you use how much brown you use extremely versatile i'm going in for a second layer on the negative painting of the roots now you'll see that some of it's dried quite lightly and I need to put more blue in the mix to cool it down and make some of the the mixes darker I can find more roots and draw more roots in the shadows so I'm sorry I had to skip forward a long way because that's when I needed it up close I'm using my number one rigger brush you can call it a rigger you can call it a liner brush and I am painting in the cedar branches that are hanging down from the trees I've mixed sepia with burnt sienna probably a touch of ultramarine to give some nice dark branches and cedar really is a droopy kind of a tree I'm, I'm getting that off camera getting that dark green that I made with the ultramarine blue the Windsor yellow or azo yellow and burnt sienna and I'm putting in those green cedar needles I never really want I never know if you call them needles they're very flattened they're not spiky like a fur needle they're very flattened sort of a needle thank you